Brought to you by the Order 1886. Discover history's darkest secret. Hey everyone, you're watching Reality Check. Now this week's episode, which is sponsored by Sony, is going to take us on a wee trip to 19th century London. But not just any old 19th century London. Oh no, this version of the historical Big Smoke features lycanthropes, steampunk weaponry, and Nikola Tesla. The famous Serbian-American inventor is in fact the focus of our show this week, where I'll be investigating just how close this fictional Tesla is to his real-life counterpart. Life in London isn't looking so good in 1886. There are problems aplenty, a social class uprising, a war with a race of furry half-breeds, and most problematic of all, a deadly and highly contagious case of the mutton chops. Fortunately, Daniel Day-Lewis and his chums who make up the order, an ancient creed of knights, are here to save the day. But as the famous saying goes, many hands make light work, especially if those hands are brandishing badass electricity guns. I may have paraphrased slightly. And this is where the father of alternating current, as he is often known, comes in, providing the group of monster fighters with useful tools and devices. And as much as we can tell so far, this mainly comprises things that are capable of zapping, exploding, or generally imbuing death and destruction. So, how does this compare to the real life Nikola Tesla? Well, in 1886, the 30-year-old Tesla had in fact just resigned from position in Thomas Edison's lab. They fell out over a misunderstanding about a bet, a rift which would develop into a full-blown and bitter professional rivalry known as the War of Currents, with Edison championing direct current and Tesla alternating current. However, it was New York, not London, where Tesla ultimately struck out on his own as a fully-fledged inventor. And he was an incredibly prolific one at that, with over 300 patents to his name throughout his long career. Perhaps his biggest contribution was to develop a motor which enabled alternating current, or AC, to be used directly. Now this was a big deal, as until this invention came along, AC power had to first be converted to direct current, or DC, at a significant loss of efficiency. Nice job, Nikola. But did he make weapons like our fictional Tesla does for the order? Well, believe it or not, Tesla did claim to have both built and tested a death ray. Seriously. In his own words, the Teleforce weapon would send concentrated beams of particles through the free air of such tremendous energy that they would bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 200 miles from a defending nation's border and will cause armies to drop dead in their tracks. That certainly sounds like a death ray. So, where is it? Well, there was never any designs or plans found, let alone a prototype. And also, none of the lab assistants that ever worked with Tesla ever spoke of such a device existing. So, make of that what you will. But that is as far as the real Tesla went with creating weapons. However, fictional Tesla is clearly taking notes from some of the research carried out by his factual counterpart in the design of his weaponry. Take the arc gun. This beast charges up before firing a blast of deadly energy. Now, this is clearly inspired by Tesla's work with electricity, and particularly his famous Tesla coil. The coil, very simply put, works as a transformer for alternating current. It builds up voltage using the coils of wire, eventually storing enough charge to let off a spark into the air. For more on Tesla coils, including a great demonstration, check out the resource page for this episode. Perhaps the most believable invention that our fictional Tesla gives to the Knights in the Order, however, has nothing at all to do with zapping people. Introducing the Communicator. This wireless device keeps the whole team in constant contact, kind of like a ye olde walkie-talkie. You see, Tesla actually started out his career as a telephone engineer and worked extensively in the field of wireless communication. He was actually the first person to ever demonstrate wireless comms successfully working, and to this day, he holds all the original patents. Very apt, then, that he kits out his order buddies with this piece of kit. And that's it for this week's Reality Check. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments box below, or you can contact me on Twitter. Now, next week, we're going to go back to our part two, all about cheat bots. So make sure you join me then. <laughs>